Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how you can take a color photograph and turn that into a black and white posterized image, just like this. This is useful just for the artistic look of it if you want that, or you may want to use this as a way to analyze a picture to see exactly where the darks and the lights are sitting, possibly as a precursor to working on a different kind of artwork, painting, watercolor, whatever. Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon a couple of times to get notifications. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This is a fairly straightforward process, but there are a few steps to get this exactly right. Let me show you what those are. So here's our beginning photograph, and we want to separate this out into distinct areas in several limited shades of gray. The first thing we'll need, of course, is to convert this into a black and white image. So I'll start off by making a duplicate of the background layer. Just right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer. And OK, there we go. You can hide the original if you want to. Let's now convert this layer into a black and white image. Go up to Enhance, come down to Convert to Black and White right here, and there it is. I'm going to put this right over here on the right hand side so you can see the image over here. You have several choices, infrared, newspaper portraits, scenic landscape, urban snapshots, and vivid landscapes. I recommend that you go through each one of these and see how it looks. Let's put it over here like that. What you want is to get the broadest range of values that you can in your main subject. Infrared is not too bad, but it's a bit too bright right in there. Newspaper is too harsh and it's going too white. We'd actually lose that part, so that's not any good. Portrait's not too bad. It's maybe a bit dark in here. Scenic landscape is a little bit lighter, a little bit broader range of values. I kind of like that one. Urban snapshots, a little bit darker. Maybe it's a bit too dark up in here. And then vivid is going to be just, again, kind of strange. So I'd say between the portrait and the scenic landscape on this one, and the main difference I'm seeing is right in here in this shoulder. I think I'll go for the scenic landscape because of course it has a bit more value separation in the rest of the horse in here. So just go through, try your different settings, and when you're happy with that, then just click OK. We've now converted this into a black and white image. Now we need to save this out to separate that out into the distinct different areas. And the way you do that with the most control is by doing a Save As. Go up here to File. We're going to be saving this for the web. In here you have nice big images to look at. Now if your screen is small, if your Save for Web is kind of small like that, just grab the bottom right hand corner. You can pull this out larger and get a better view. You also can zoom in using the zoom control right there. I'll just zoom in on the horse right here. We can now see those different separated out areas. You have a few options up here. You want to have this thing set for the GIF image format right here. And you have selective and you have perceptual. I think perceptual is giving me a broader range of values in here, so I'll go with that one. The other ones in here are the adaptive and the restrictive, which is not very good. But again, go through here Try the different settings and see which one gives you the best results. I think actually the adaptive is a little bit better in here on the face. Let me just go up here to the hand tool. We can then move the picture down like that. Let's just watch the face in here. There's perceptual. There's the adaptive. Let's go back and forth just a little bit. I think perceptual on this. Now on the dithering, this is going to be giving you a grayscale pattern in there to make it look more like an actual photograph. You don't want to have that, so set this at no dither. Over here, you have your different colors. There's 256. It's going to look like a regular photograph. So you want to have a fairly low number of colors. Two is too hard, as you can see, too harsh. Four is still blocked up too much. The next one up is eight. Now you can type in your own number up here if you want to, like six. But it's kind of blocking up. I think that 8 is a real nice number for that. Everything else can stay the same. So there we go. There is the posterization effect right there. Then just choose Save. And we'll save that out. There we go. We now need to open up that new saved file. Go over here. 
and I'll just open that. It'll be saved in the same location, and it's actually that one right there. There it is. There's our saved file. Now we need to separate this out into individual layers for each one of these different gray values. To do that, we first need to convert this whole image from an index image. This is a GIF file image. It's indexed. We need to convert this over to an RGB file. Let's go up to Image, come down to Mode right here, and choose RGB Color right there. That will then allow us to use the magic wand to select our areas. Okay, let's go to the magic wand right here. Come down where it says Tolerance and set this all the way to the left. We want that to be at zero, so it only selects just one color. Make sure that Contiguous is not checked. Anti-aliasing can be checked. That's just fine. And then take your magic wand and click into the darkest of your areas. And that should select all of those dark areas throughout the whole picture. Okay, now go up to the Layer menu and come down to New and Layer via Copy. And that makes a copy of just those dark areas on a new layer just like that. Okay, so we'll hide that one. Let's come back down to the background. Do the same thing. Grab your next darkest area that's this in here, this color right there. It'll grab that throughout the whole picture again. Same exact thing. Go up to Layer, New, via Copy. And there we go. There's, let me just hide that background. So there's just the kind of medium darks right there on their own layer. Here's the darks and there's the medium darks. And that's all there is to it. Simply go through and build up your image again by grabbing each one of those color areas. So there you go. That's how you can take a color photograph. Let's show the original again. There you go. So a color photograph just like that. Convert that over into a grayscale image, black and white image, and then convert that over into a grayscale limited value GIF file. And then if you want to, you can convert that into separate layers for each one of your different grayscale values. Now if you like this video make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And again there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay and I'll see you next time.